Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today is week nine of the Stash Buster block series and the block today is called Thrifty. Now Thrifty is made of all squares. We have some large squares and some small squares. We have four patch units and single units and three different colors. I will get started and I'll show you how to put this block together. Okay, to make this block, you're going to need three different colors of fabric. I have a dark, a medium, and a light. And for the dark, you're going to need four, four and a half inch squares. And for the medium, you're going to need one four and a half inch square, and then eight two and a half inch squares. And then for your light, you need eight two and a half inch squares. So I'm going to start by making the four patch units and to do that I'm just going to sew a medium two and a half to a light two and a half inch square and I'm going to chain those just one right after the other just going through the machine and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. The thread I'm using this is so fine by Superior Threads and this is color 401. So I have this in the bobbin and in the needle. And this is a very thin thread. Um, it's supposed to make your piecing more accurate. A lot of people use this thread just in their bobbin, but I like to balance the weight of my thread in my, bo my needle and my bobbin. So I like to use the same thing. So the stitch length is 2.5. And I'm just going to pair all of these up. Um, this aqua color is a batik, so there's no right or wrong side. I just choose which side I like the best and use that as my right side. And I just stitch these one right after the other. So we get just make a chain of these. And the white fabric I'm using is actually a muslin. I am using up all the scraps that I have in my stash. So, um, and I do have a lot of. I do have a lot of white scraps in my stash so I'm using those all up and or as much as I can I may still have some left when I get done I don't know but this chain piecing makes it go just a little bit faster because you're not having to cut your threads after every piece this block is um, very balanced, very well balanced. It looks the same from whatever direction you lay it. Okay, so I've got my chain and there's a couple things you could do at this point. You can clip them all apart or you could open them up and press them the way they are. And I'm going to go ahead and clip them because it, I, it, I really don't see any advantage to leaving them together at this point because to sew them together I'm going to have to take them apart anyway and flip them. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these apart at this point and then I will press them open towards the darker fabric which is the aqua in this case. Oops, they all landed in my lap. cut off my thread tails and then we're going to press these open. Okay so we're ready to press open. <clears throat> I'm just going to lay some out and just press them the way I sewed them and then press the seam open. And I currently have steam on but you don't need that. I'm 
Okay, there's one set. And then do the same to the next set. Okay, now to make the two patch or four patches, all I have to do is turn them so that we got the opposite colors meeting. Just like that. So now I'm just going to sew all of these along one of the long sides, like right down through here. Okay, now I need to match my seams um, just by nesting them together making sure there's no space between the seams. This fabric's really sticking together today, so here we go. And um, there's a stitch along that seam there. And I think I'm going to do it on this side. This way I have, this seam here is facing down, which the first foot will go this way so it won't want to flip it up. If I had it going the other direction, it would want to push that up. So I'm going to sew it on this side. Okay, and I'm going to put the next that in and do the same. I'm just going to chain these together. Part and press them open. On these, it doesn't matter which direction you press them open because you're going to have, because they're just um, symmetrical, so it's not going to matter. So just lay them down and press them open. So now we have our four, four patches and we can lay out our block. So um, the trick for this block is to have um, your triangles all pointing towards the middle from each corner. And here's our middle piece, which is this um, four and a half inch aqua piece. And I'm going to just lay all of the four patches so that they are facing the middle. So you can see how they are making an X. And then um, the other four and a half, the dark, four and a half inch dark squares will go around. So here we have the block. So now I'm going to sew rows together. I've got three rows and then I then I will sew the rows to each other. So I'm going to start here. 
okay so here's the first section I just have to make sure that I don't um, sew this seam down this way I want to keep it up if it does get sewn that way I can always take out a few stitches and fix it I could leave it just the way it is uh, you know I've quilted plenty of quilts that the seams have been turned the wrong direction and it can be done but uh, I think you just get a better finish if you can keep them all in the same direction and I'm just going to sew these one row at a time I'm not going to change stitch these together So on the next piece, and I apologize for the noise. My family is home today, and they don't know how to be quiet, so <laughs> I try, but here we go. Here's the last piece on this row. Here is row number one. And then row number two is all of the four and a half inch squares. So this one will go together pretty easily. At least it should. other dark piece so here is <laughs> here's row number two and then row number three is similar to row number one. I have to make sure I have my four patches turned the right direction. So now I just need to press these and then sew all these rows together. Okay, on these uh, rows, what they're going to want to do is to turn towards the solid uh, four and a half inch square. So um, that is also the dark one. So I'm just going to let it do that. And I'm just going to press those right towards the dark. And then the middle row, also press it towards the dark. What this also does is alternate the way those seams are facing so that the next step will go together e more easily. So we have, um, on this row, the seams are going towards the center of the square. On these, they're going towards the outside of the square. So these will, won't pile right on top of each other. They will nest better that way so we're going to do the same for this row press towards the dark now i'm ready to press or to sew the rows together so we're going to just do row one and two and then we'll attach row three 
Okay, so I'm going to nest my seams together. And since I have two of these, I'm going to go ahead and um, put a pin in there to hold them so I don't have to fiddle with it as much as I get to those uh, seams there. But you can do without pins if you want to. And I don't sew over my pins because I've had needles break doing that before, so I don't do that anymore. But I know a lot of people do, and they have good luck with it, I just don't, so um, I avoid sewing over my pins. Okay, there's row one and two together. So this is what we have at this point. This is row one, row two, and then we'll add row three to it. And do the same thing, I'll match up my seams. And pin them in place. pin this seam in place so press this block open and see what we have. Okay, so here's our block. And I'm going to press these seams towards the center. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's no resistance on these blocks here, whereas these seams make it harder to press that direction. Now if you want to, because of the way you're going to connect these blocks to another set of blocks, then it certainly can be done, you just have to work at it a little bit harder. Like on this block here, I have that's, um, these seams pressed towards the center. Now if I wanted to uh, sew these two blocks together like this, and I press these seams towards the center, then I've got the seams going in the same direction. So actually, I think I will go ahead and press these seams towards the four patches instead of towards the center um, because I may sew these together so we'll just see and then as you do your block or your quilt layout if you need to switch the way your seams are laying you can do that so let's go ahead and press these towards the four patch row there we go so now if I wanted to sew these two blocks together, the seams are facing opposite directions and they'll go together easier right here. So that'll make it easier to sew those two blocks together. So anyway, here we go. Here is our thrifty block. Um, I like the way these colors go together. This was, these were not a coordinating set of fabrics. They were just fabrics I had in my stash and uh, I just felt there's a little bit of green in here so I felt this would go good with the aqua here. So there we go, we have Thrifty. And then I wanted to show you what this would look like if we put four of these blocks together. Here I have four of the Thrifty blocks and I wanted to show you what they would look like if you put them all together in a quilt. Now each one of my blocks is a different colorway. Ok, 
Okay, so each one of my blocks is a different colorway. So this is all really scrappy. Um, if you put them all together, just side by side, this is what you would get. Now with this block, since it's symmetrical, it really doesn't matter which way you turn it, you're going to get the same look. Um, as you can see here, it really isn't going to matter how you turn these. They're, it's all going to be the same. So there, if you butt these up, one right up against the other, you're going to get the same look. But you can see how uh, interesting that would be. It does make a secondary block right in here when you do butt them up together. And then you have a row of the straight or the single blocks going like this. So it makes you, it makes like a plaid look. So you could play with your colors in your blocks that way to um, make your own plaid using this block. So anyway, here is the thrifty block and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.